All right, just past our first month owning our Airbnb in the North Georgia mountains. So I'm gonna give you the top five things that I've learned. I didn't know beforehand, I know now, or, or I may have known, but not really known now. So top five things I've learned in my first month, and I'm gonna give you an idea of what I did financially in that first month when it was all said and done. This is Steve with the Mullen Realty Group, EXP. So talked about, we're gonna just document the whole process you know, as we go and how everything has gone, some of the lessons we've learned. We're going to pick up the pace a little bit because I don't want this to drag because I want to hit you with the big five that I've learned and I want you to know. So if you've ever thought about getting an Airbnb listing or your, or I'm sorry, an Airbnb uh, home to turn into a listing or we'd be on VRBO or however you want to rent it. And like in our previous ones, we're going to call a short-term rental an Airbnb, kind of like you call a little tissue a Kleenex or, you know, that little thing you put in your ear, a Q-tip. That's a brand name. So I know, yeah, it's Airbnb, but I'm talking about short-term rentals. So if you want to get your first short-term rental, five things that I really know now after my first month that I want you to know right now. And here we go. All right, the number one most important thing is you got to pick the right house and the numbers have to work. We looked at a lot of homes, probably a month and a half, two months, looking for the house. You find a really nice house, looks great, the price may not be right. You find a really nice house, looks great, the price is right may not necessarily rent in that area. Find a nice house, looks great, priced right, rents in that area, maybe not quite as much. Maybe I can put too much money. There's so many factors that you've got to go into. We looked at dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of homes online, did a lot of research online, really only looked at a couple in person because we were just trying to figure out what area, do the, do the numbers work, things like that. So you want to look at how much is it going to cost every month to run the place? How much are you going to make every month? You know, and don't just guess. You got to go online, talk about their website all the time, airdna.co. That will give you an idea of not only what has that place done in the in the past if it's been on the market, but what do people do in that area as far as renting? Do people rent in that area? We found a lot of really nice houses. I found one way up in the North Georgia mountains on the northeast side near Hiawassee. Really nice house, really cool. Pictures were great, but nobody ran it up there. And it was on a long driveway that was kind of like on the side of the, you know, on the side of the mountain, whatever, kind of freaked us out looking at the pictures. Thought to ourselves, this may not work out. Cute house, great price, it just wasn't gonna work. The place that we ended up buying, great price, had been rented. The price was a lot lower than it was when it first went on the market. We looked at all the numbers of what's it going to cost us this one made sense, so it went through the whole ringer. So the important thing is, number one, you've got to pick the right house. It has to make sense. Don't go into this emotionally. This is a business transaction. The numbers have to work or you can't take the swing. Okay, so number one, got to find the right house. The numbers have got to work. Number two, you got to defend your money. Every dollar counts, okay? When you've got your place, I'll give you a perfect example. I'm a realtor. Uh, we get commission. We sell like an $800,000 house, we get a really nice commission off it, okay? I won't get into it, I'm just saying, as a realtor, we make decent commission. We can afford to lose if we need to buy somebody a warranty or buy some whatever, there's, there's some fat to help take care of our people if we need to take care of our people. In this ball game, there's not as much fat, especially off the top. Now, as we go and rents go up, mortgage stays the same, that's a different story. But in the beginning, there's no fat. We got to watch every dollar. So what that means is if you're going to get something fixed, get it fixed right, but get it fixed without you know going over the top. If you want to buy something nice for the house, do something nice for your people, make it something that's nice for your people that is necessary. We can do all kinds of stuff. I can have a marching band waiting for my people who rent my place. I can have you know bottles of champagne. I can have all, all that stuff done. We're going to lose money real quick. People want a really nice place to get away to. They don't have to worry about, you know, is the bedding comfortable, is whatever. Spend the money on what's important to spend the money on. And there's a lot of videos about that. And I'm going to post that later talking about when you spend money on your place, buy things for quality. Buy it the right way or you're going to end up buying it three times. Okay. You're going to have to buy the replacement and then replacement's replacement. Okay. So buy it right the first time and then you have to buy it three times. Um, and then when you're getting things done to the house, again, just be mindful of how many dollars it is that you're spending, okay? Don't be cheap, but don't be 
over the top, especially in the beginning. In the beginning, you got to get this thing launched. You got to get it going. So spend only the money that you absolutely need to spend going forward. So number two, watch every dollar. Because those dollars will walk out the door in a hurry. All right, number three, don't sweat the small stuff. Came into it sweating the small stuff a little bit at times. Our first people, we were freaked out when they were there. We were nervous. Do they like the place? Am I this and that? Uh, the second people weren't quite as nervous. Uh, we had some people that went in there and they left and they left the house a wreck. Um, they left food all over. They left whatever. Nothing bad. Our cleaners went in and cleaned it. No biggie. It's fine. First, we were, I was to be honest, I was pissed off. And I was like, okay, whatever. We, we left the review. We left, you know, said my piece. We move on with our lives. We've got to remember that this is our house. This is not our home. Okay. And I always put it through a filter of when I go down with the family to, let's say, Destin, and we stay in Destin for a week, that's somebody else's house. It's not their home. It's their house. It's a condo. We stay. We try and take care of it as best we can or whatever. But I think to myself, how do those people probably approach this? That's how I should approach our Airbnb. So n now that I'm on the other side of it looking at it, I realize, okay, as long as when the people come in, they have good reviews, um, you know, they don't come in with 500 people. You know, we our place maxes out at four. As long as four people show up, I'm not worried about it. Uh, and my cleaners do a really good job of taking care of it. And then there's, you know, you've got to figure at some point somebody's going to break something. That's part of the deal. Okay, it stinks. I don't want to fix something that somebody breaks, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to lose sleep or freak out about the fact that somebody broke something. It's a house. It's not my home. Okay, so you got to approach that. It's, it's your house. It's not your home. Don't sweat the small stuff. Every once in a while, somebody's going to jack your place up, okay? It is what it is. If you don't want somebody to jack your place up, if you don't want that, don't get an Airbnb. That, it's as simple as that. So keep that in mind. The cool thing that I did was I started joining some of these Facebook groups, some of these guys on YouTube that have like the big followings on Airbnb or the big followings talking about Airbnb. I joined some of their Facebook groups. Those been some of the best ones to follow and kind of keep, when there's an issue, I put it in there and everybody talks to me right off the ledge and says, chill out. I'm like, cool. Because in the beginning I was nervous, put it on there. They said, chill out. It's fine. And so now I'm that guy now, you know, a month in now I'm already, people are like, I got my first Airbnb. What do I do? First thing you do is you chill out. Okay. So keep that in mind. Don't sweat the small stuff. You can clean it. You can fix it. It's not a big deal. Now, if somebody comes in and does like thousands of dollars worth of damage, then you handle it. That's something to not to not just, oh, no big deal. That's something you get to freak out about. But the little stuff, somebody left pots and pans in the sink, chill. It's all going to be good. So, again, number three, don't sweat the small stuff. Number four, hire some professionals to help you out. Our place is about an hour and a half away from our house. If I needed to get there, I mean, I'd get there and fix something if I need to. I depend on my cleaners, who were, they were the cleaners that worked with the people who previously had the Airbnb. Um, we were able to, to keep them as cleaners. They do a fantastic job. Love them. Um, the same person that did the, the lawn service for the last people, they do the lawn service now. We've got a whole laundry list of people. The, the people take care of the hot tub. Uh, I need somebody fix something fixed in the house. We got fixtures, things in the house. I got plumbers. I got whatever. I got a whole army of people ready to help out whenever I need help with. Okay, you gotta have that list of people. You gotta have your pros ready to help. The biggest one though, if, unless it's like your Airbnb, unless you're like renting out like a house on your, you know, property or right around the corner, and you can get there and clean it yourself. Your cleaners are going to be the biggest eyes and ears that you have on the ground taking care of stuff. They've got to be rock and roll stars. They got to take care of your stuff. You got to trust them. That's the biggest thing you can hire is a really, really, really good cleaner. Thank goodness we got an awesome one um, and they do an awesome job. Pros, you got to surround yourself with professionals to get this done because you're trying to do this all by yourself. It's going to take a lot of time and you really don't know, especially in the beginning, what you're doing. Now, if we start picking up more and more of these and we actually have, you know, this becomes more of a, you know, more of a business type thing that is going to change our, you know, we hire out people to, we actually hire somebody to be on our team. You know what I mean? Things like that. So things will change in the beginning when you're first getting started though, with your very first one, it's got to be a home run. And we talked about earlier, 
uh, not spending money where he doesn't need to be spent, not overspending, really minding your business as far as the money goes. Spending money on a quality cleaner is worth every penny. Okay, so there you go. Number four, hire pros to help you out with your short-term rental. Number five, you have to have tiered goals. What do I mean by that? All right, my goal for the first couple months is different than my goal for the next couple months, which is different than my goal for the next couple months. So first couple months, when you have your Airbnb, your goal is to get this bad boy off the ground, profitable, and become a super host. And on VRBO, you want to become a uh, premier host. So Airbnb has super host, VRBO has premier host. People uh, try and stay in places like that, number one. Number two, you want to, uh, you know, I think you get a little bit of a bump from, from those platforms by being a super host, premier host. So what do you have to do? Like Airbnb, you have to have a certain number of people stay with you. You have to have a certain uh, percentage of review. You have to have, you know, a certain percentage of no cancellations. There's a couple things you got to hit. Same thing with VRBO. So check them both out. What do I need to do to hit those? Whatever it is. That's your goal number one. Because my goal when I came in, I was like, well, for my whole family and friends, well, you know, we're going to have a separate website set up and they can book through that and we'll do a little bit of this and that. And I had somebody pull me aside and say, don't do that. You want to be a rock and roll star on Airbnb and VRBO. Once you're there, then you can spread. Okay. But your family and friends is not going to float the boat. Okay. You're going to need Airbnb and VRBO to help you get out there and find renters for your place. So do the best you can there. Once that's you know, launched, once you're super host, premier host, then what you can do is you can go through and we're going to set up a, a website on Guesty where that's going to be more of a direct um, type platform for people to sign up with. So that way we don't have to go through Airbnb. We don't have to give them the money or VRBO. We can just do it ourselves. That's what everybody does. But in the very beginning, that, that, that again, tiered goals. Okay, so once I get to this tier, then I'm going to change it and we're going to change things up and whatever. So keep that in mind. You know, my long-term tiered goal is to get another short-term rental and then another and then run this one and, and, and sell it and split it into two more and just boom, 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 and we build from there. Those are long-term goals. Okay, and we had to hit certain tiers. But I can't get up here until I get to this tier. So in the very beginning, we got to get profitable and we've got to uh, become super host and premier host. So once we hit those, then we'll start adding all the other stuff. But in the very beginning, get people in there, get viewed on Airbnb. And that's the other thing. Really study the algorithm. And we'll do this in another video, studying the algorithm of how do we show up more in Airbnb, how you show up more in VRBO, how it is you can translate that into more um, bookings, keep more people in there, put more money in your pocket to help pay for the place. And again, get through tier one so that way you can get to tier two and keep building from there. So number five, again, you want to have tiered goals. You can't get all the way up to there until you get to step one. So keep that in mind. All right. So those are my top five. Now, as promised, I'm going to give you my, my breakdown of what we did our first month. So we close on July 26th. Um, so I'm going to give you my first month. We're going to count the last couple days of July and we're going to count all through August. Okay. So we'll count that as like one, like super large month, like 36 day month. And then we'll go month by month from there. So first month and change, we had, uh, about 75% full rate on the number of renters that we had. Some of those renters were people that we had from the previous owners. Some of those renters were able to pick up by being online. Very cool. So 75%. Um, because it was in August in that area, not quite like, you know, prime season. Prime season is fall and winter. So we're coming into prime season right now. Very excited about what's going to happen. But for the first month, it was basically like we talked about. Get some people in there. Let's get some reviews. Let's get this party started. Let's get things rolling and see what we can do. At the end of the day, when I looked at the amount of money I spent between cleaners, um, bills, whatever and then money we made, we were down about $200. Okay, I was hoping for a bigger spread, obviously, but at the same time, it's also our very first month. In your first month, just like when you buy a house, a lot of your bills that you get are connection type stuff. Like you can't get your internet without paying a connection fee, or your water without paying a connection fee, or your electric without paying a connection fee. So all these connection fees that we had to pay, um, all these things that we had to pay to get 
kind of ramped up. There was a lot of things that we had to buy for the house that were like initial costs up front. So all that's kind of baked in too. And the other thing is we came in during the quiet season. August is a very slow season. So from a dollar to dollar standpoint, from what we made to what we spent, we're down about $200. Again, I wish it was a little higher, but when I look back on it, I'll pay that $200 to be in the position that we are right now, pay it every day. Because we learned a lot in our first month. We got off the ground. We're rocking and rolling now. Things are really starting to pick up momentum. And we've learned, we're learning the game, and it's going to make the next one a little bit easier, and the next one a little bit easier, and the next one a little bit easier. So, again, two hundred dollars, I'll take it. What are we going to do in two a month? In what are we going to do a month too? We'll talk about that at the end of this month, the end of September. We'll have an update, and hopefully, fall starts to deliver some uh, some more guests and some a little bit more money, and we can get this built up and rolling, and we can get to tier two. We'll see how it goes. If you have questions. Love talking about this, and a lot of friends say, oh, this is so cool that you're doing this because we want to ask you questions. We'll give you the answers. Give me a call. Let me know. 470-233-4409. Steve, take care. Bye.